Welcome back. Big night coming up Sunday here on Court TV, the premiere of Someone They Knew. Um, I want you to take a look at this little piece we put together to give you a little more background about the, the show and the host behind it. What happens when the person you love the most wants you dead? It's the question viewers will be tuning in for as Tamron Hall gets ready for season two of her hit true crime series on Court TV. Brand new stories of the victims killed by someone they knew. Hall took a break to talk to us about what the show means to her. This show for me was so deeply personal. From the title alone, someone they knew. I've been public for some years now about the unsolved death of my own sister. When she was found, I will never forget the investigator on the scene saying, we believe we have a person of interest and it's someone that she knows. It's been nearly 20 years since her sister Renata was beaten to death and no one has ever been arrested for her murder. She died, according to police, blunt force trauma to the back of the head. Um, she was found at her home that day and they did not believe that there was an intruder. The, the impact of this is it never goes away. It never goes away. The book is never closed. That chapter is never final. Like Hall, the Sanders featured in season two are hoping to complete a chapter in their family saga. A quarter to 12, I was awakened in a dream with Shelton screaming out to me, very loud scream. So I immediately got up. We began to make phone calls and a check to see whether he would answer his phone, and of course there was no answer. It wasn't like Shelton to not come home. Shelton Sanders, a student at the University of South Carolina, disappeared in 2001. Missing and presumed dead, Mark Richardson, a friend and the last person to be with Shelton, was charged with his murder. It's June 19, 2001, at 8.44 p.m., Ms. Sanders. Have you heard from Shelton? Have not heard from my son. The trial has not answered a question that has haunted the family for decades. Shelton's body has never been recovered, and a new reward offer is giving his parents hope that information will one day bring him home. This show is compelling. These stories are fascinating, but you will never forget from this show that there was a friend, a husband, a wife, there was a human, there was a person. They won't get to wake up and say, wow, what a beautiful day. They've been robbed of that. Why? The question of motive drives Hall's interest in the cases she covers, especially when it comes to a certain kind of story. And the type of story for me is when the crime is carried out by someone with an intimate connection to the individual, a uh, partner, a spouse, um, someone that they shared their bed with. And then in a what seems like sometimes a blink of an eye, that same lover can turn to someone who brought in the most evil into the home. I am fascinated how that happens, how you can have such a connection to someone and then take their life. Murder may be the show's central theme, but Hall says it's not all dark. I've seen it time and time again where it took just one person to care or one detective to say, this doesn't sit well with me. Let me go back in that interrogation room and let me ask this question again. So as horrifying as it can be, each and every time, there is someone who will remind you of humanity and who will remind you that there are more good people out there than bad. There we go. Someone they knew. Season two. New episodes begin this Sunday only here on Court TV. And joining me now to talk about this Sunday season's premiere is the host, Tamron Hall is with us. Tamron, great to see you. It's great to see you as always. Of course, I'm a big fan. Thank you so much. Let's let's start here. I was listening to what you said, and to me, a couple things stuck out. Number one, at the, the 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 word closure. I hate that word. 
it never exists for victims, and you're one of those victims. And I can't imagine the unsolved case and, and how you try to process all of that. Um, it's got to be almost like torture to a certain extent to not have an answer. You know, for me, I put my sister's children first. Um, on my daytime talk show, which I host every day, I had the opportunity to have my nephew, Leroy, my sister's youngest son on the show. And he talked about telling his own child what happened to grandma. How do you answer that question when an innocent child says, where is my grandma? And for me, any emotions or feelings that I have are second, third, fourth, fifth to those of her children who deserve an answer, just like all of the people in this season two of the show. Sometimes, as you pointed out, the word closure is overused. I understand why we use it, right? Because we want there to be a sense of peace. But for many, there's not that. We saw that in the clip that you showed just now. For many people, that closure doesn't exist. And even when there's a conviction and there's someone that the victim knows, you ask, how could you? How, how could you, you know, have dinner with someone or go to sleep with someone and then at some point decide that you have the ability and you have determined you will take their life? It, it sends chills through my body right now, and I know that with Court TV being the best at covering these, these cases of all types in the courtroom, you sit there as the person is interrogated and they are still never a sufficient answer to how you can carry out something like this. And that's what we explore. Yeah, that level of betrayal is, is, is shocking. And I think that's a big part of what draws the interest of people because we all have relationships, right? Whether, whether it's friends, you know, a loved one, a partner, a wife, a husband, and when that betrayal occurs, I, I noticed in the clips one of the faces I recognized from a trial I covered uh, a few years ago. A few, well, it's now many years ago, Tamron, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but Dr. Dirk Reiniger, is, is, is Dr. Dirk Reiniger's case in season two? It is in season two, and, and it is one of the cases that we highlight because of the extraordinary nature of it. When you think about the deception, right, that goes into, as was in that case, trying to cover it up, trying to um, mask what many people learn in courts are monsters. These are monsters who are masking themselves as loved ones, as friends, as spouses. And that's the extraordinary nature of it. You know, I would love to take credit for finding these cases and exploring these cases. No one person can do it. We have a phenomenal team of producers who are behind this show who look for the most compelling cases, as you just mentioned, to really, I think, in so many ways, Vinny, to, to prod us into wondering, what would I do? What would I think? Some of the things that as a journalist for 30 years, I've been doing this. I started out as a general assignment reporter in my home state of Texas. The interrogation videos and some of the uh, cases that we're able to show, you watch people start the lie, try to continue the lie, add to the lie, and then at some point realize that the lie is not working. And you see it in real time, which is why I was so... Um, willing and wanting, to be honest with you, to do this show. When I was approached season one, thinking about Court TV and the history of Court TV and all of the cases and all of the archives, I knew we would be able to do this right. It is so important to me. I, I, I've done crime shows and I've been, as I said, in this world for a long time. I didn't want there to be a glam version, you know, this, this almost um, video game aspect to it where you don't realize that this is a real person. This was a real case. There were DAs and prosecutors battling it out in many cases um, to try to prove guilt or innocence. But at the end of the day, there's a family right now watching that show and hoping that we do right by their loved ones. And so we are telling these stories in real person, in real time victims, family members, DAs, prosecutors, all of those who are most intimately involved so that through the, the, the through the lens of this show, you see the total scope of what happened and perhaps maybe put yourself in the position of a juror 
and you think, could I have found that person guilty? We have a case where an individual was found guilty and was acquitted much later. And it makes you think about justice and what we call is right. Absolutely. Tamron Hall, great to see you. Congratulations on season two. Uh, and we'll be watching Sunday night, 9 o'clock, right here on your front row seat to justice. Thanks so much, Tamron. Thank you, Vinny. I adore you. You do great work. Thank you so much.